There you go. There it is. My uh, 2170 XD with a blown out bale on the back and all the Nodder flags standing straight in the air. Uh, it does actually make a really good bale. That's, of course, the baler I bought. Um, but this is a little uh, tidbit of information um, I'd like to, like to share. So, I'm, uh, the job that I'm on, it's not an not a easy, easy job. And definitely not, uh, the, the crop condition isn't great. And I'll be fair on that. It's, it's not, not very good at all. It's, I mean, it's like one of the hardest stuff, stuff to bail. The other thing is the people who have the crop are probably some of the hardest people I've worked for, and uh, I just, every five minutes, it's something new. So, this is more of a, this is what's happened so far, and kind of a, maybe don't, don't do what I do. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, came in, cut the stuff, uh, was going to use uh, a friend's baler. Uh, I decided it wasn't worth tearing up his machine. And uh, I looked at what it was going to cost to lease the machine. I called this baler. Uh, I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy a baler. Uh, it is, and it's a high bale machine. This this baler's got a lot of bales on it, and these people uh, from this is kind of where this video is going. Is these people are ex somewhat hard to deal with? Actually, they're extremely hard to deal with. So when uh, when I bought this baler, I said, I need this thing. It it's got to be tying out the door. Uh, and that that was agreed upon and this is the situation I've had the baler oh I've put almost 300 bales across it and if I the most bales I got through the machine was 20 without any problems to be fair I have had a it went through the shop uh, they, they fixed some bearings and stuff. I don't know exactly. It had a bad tire. And they kind of... They pushed it through the shop because I need, you know... Uh, their main guy was out. It's understandable. It happens. Uh, he came back. They pushed it through the shop. Fixed what they thought needed to be fixed. Um, and delivered it to me. And I took it to the field the next day. Now, I had a feeling... <laughs> the baler was sold as it's baling in the field today and we're picking it up today so I don't know if the guys were back there tying the strings together as they were coming out the machine or what they were doing but it's kind of hard to believe that the, <laughs> they were getting more maybe it was maybe it was tying like I don't know how many bales it, it was tying something though so it, it's a, it's a highly worn out machine. Uh, it's 65,000 bales on it. I knew that going into it. Uh, the problem is the baler is not working. It's not working at all. Guy's been up here twice. I mean, it's just been one thing after another. This thing, this thing couldn't fall over itself if it even wanted to at this point. And here, here's the issue when you start dealing with silly people. Um, I needed a machine that was ready to go. I can't afford a new machine. I, I just can't. Uh, 
I got to start somewhere. And, you know, I had a good baler. I sold it for a profit. I did it for a reason that I needed. I haven't needed one until now. So I bought this baler. I thought it'd be a good baler that I could afford to keep and learn on. Because I don't know anything about big square balers. I, I don't know anything about them. And my dealer has helped me out tremendously. The Livingston's have been awesome about this thing. They have done everything they can to help me. Uh, but the machine's not working. So today, this is what happens when you deal with crazy people. I've been having other issues. We're you know we're putting out bail quite a few bales a day, but it's just taking forever. I should be done. I I should be done with the two fields that and I'm I'm not even done with the first one. I I should be done. I lost the third field. They called me today. I was taking my kid to the pediatrician. You know something I got to do. That's eighty five hundred dollars out of my pocket. Uh, they thought the baler was ready to go this afternoon. I went there. I didn't get 10 bales across it. Uh, just, and now, now something even worse is going on. Uh, it's over camming. I don't know. I replaced the one, uh, one of the twine arms that we thought was the issue. And now it's missing every knot. Not just one knot. It's missing every knot. Uh... This, this, these people have been so hard to deal with that they call me up today. Uh, they yank one of the fields from me. Uh, that, that's eighty. It, it was the best field. It really was. It was the best field. Uh, and that's that's eighty five hundred dollars out of my pocket. That would have been down payment on the baler plus parts and everything. I lost that right away. After our conversation today. I'll be lucky if they don't ask me to leave tomorrow since I I was in Amarillo today. I drove all the way to the finish that deal, drove, got in the machine, it was supposed to be ready to go. I, w I was there for three hours. I got 10 bales done in three hours. Um, and it, it started, actually the first bale that went through it the knotter we were having trouble with missed its knot. Uh, horrible omen. Uh, then it, it started working. It started pumping out, and then I had a little issue. I may have gotten 15. And it's just, it's been nonstop. So then whatever happened, you know, the knotter still aren't right, and it just, it finally just gave up the ghost. And yeah, so now. I'm probably, I will be very, very surprised if they don't ask me to leave tomorrow. If I do that, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be lucky if the job didn't cost me money. Uh, it, would, it was going to be a very, very lucrative job for me. It was going to be a nice springboard into the year. Uh, it was going to pay a lot of bills it was going to put profit in my pocket it was going to get me a and then the square baler was just a side note it was going to get me a down payment on a baler so that would have helped my hay business and now now it's this i mean it's just going it's going sideways quick um yeah and when when you're dealing with silly people, and I'm gonna say silly because they, I don't wanna say anything else. When you're dealing with people like that, you've gotta get in there, get the job done, and get out. You you cannot be broke down. That's why that's why when I I said I'd buy the baler, I, this thing's got this thing's got a tie, and it it hasn't done it, and and this is what's happening. All of a sudden, I, I will be very surprised if I can even pay pay for the parts that they put into the baler just to get it to the field. You know, really, I, I will be extremely surprised. 
at this point, if I can even do that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I took a risk. I bought, I bought a, a high, high bail machine. I, I thought by having it go through, through the shop, it'd be ready to go. And it's, it, this whole thing has just fallen all over itself. And now, now it's at the point, uh, it's gonna start costing me money. And all the work that I've put in has been for nothing. No, no point in even doing it. And it, it'll probably seriously hurt me financially this coming year. Uh, if, if they do yank the job and I'm stuck with the baler and I'm stuck with the repairs on the baler and no way to pay for them, uh, then yeah, I'm, it's probably gonna really, really hurt my hay business this year. So, if you're gonna go into a situation where the people are already interesting to deal with and you're gonna expand your business and do do that you know take a take a leap out there and buy a machine and it, there's a risk to it it it, it could have been extremely rewarding for me uh, financially in this job could have been amazing for me and it is now now turning into a nightmare and I mean it is turning into a nightmare um, so you know what a great way to end the year so anyways stay tuned we'll see we'll see how this thing turns out <laughs>